Hey, what's going on guys? I'm here today to give a review of a home automation product. Um, this is from a company called Luxon. Uh, they reached out to me after seeing some of my videos on YouTube for my DIY projects and asked if they could send me this impressive looking briefcase with some of their products in it, including their uh, wired uh, main unit and two extension modules. Uh, one for um, one wire and the other one is for DMX technology which I'm not actually familiar with at all. Um, so I'm going to give a review of this, uh, an overview of the hardware and as well uh, I think more importantly I'll do an overview or a brief summary of the software that comes packaged with it because I think that's probably the more important thing to look at. Um, a little disclaimer, Luxon didn't give me any money or anything like that, they just asked if they could send this to me uh, for a period of time. I've had it for about two months now and uh, you know just give an honest review and ship it back which I'm more than happy to do. Um, I think this is a pretty capable unit. Uh, I like what I'm seeing. Uh, it's kind of um, it's in the the middle tier uh, price wise uh, but it kind of reminds me of higher end home automation products that you'd see. Um, namely any houses I've been to uh, any wealthier people who have had home automation, usually it's a, a hardwired unit in their utility room. That's kind of the idea behind this, but it's at a, a more affordable price range. It's around $500 for the main unit. And I think for the software that comes with it um, and the extensibility, it's, it's a pretty reasonable price. Um, so I'll dive into that in a second, um, but first I'll give an overview of the hardware. Okay, so here's a closer up uh, view of the unit. So like I said, you've got the, uh, the main unit here, and then you've got two add-on modules for two different protocols. Uh, they sell a wide array of different add-on modules that you can connect up to this. Um, <clears throat> just take the main unit off here. Um, so this is, um, this, you know, this is a microprocessor uh, driven board. It's got an ARM processor, an SD card for uh, configuration, and um, a series of inputs and outputs, like down here, these are some relays that can handle, I think it was uh, 10 amps, uh, I might be uh, off on that. Um, but these are the ones you'd use to, say, control uh, light switches wired up. Um, a lot of people in the do-it-yourself market are probably familiar with uh, wireless-based light switches, X10, Z-Wave, things like that. Um, Higher-end home automation uh, units are wired. Um, so this, this particular unit, um, although I personally don't see an issue retrofitting a home with it, uh, probably more geared towards new installs. Um, so what would happen is your light switch, like this European style one here, uh, would be in your wall obviously, a wire would go down to uh, this main unit to drive input, and uh, these uh, 10 amp out wires would actually go to the light sockets themselves. Um, Luxon did tell me that they're uh, making another unit like this that's meant uh, more for retrofitting. Um, so it's uh, all based on a wireless system. Um, but as far as I know, as far as I've been able to tell, there's no reason you can't use this head unit and also integrate uh, wireless products into it. Um, so a, a few interesting things about it, uh, maybe obvious to some people, is unlike a uh, light switch just driving a light, even a home automation uh, one, uh, like Z-Wave or X10, um, they just drive the light. Whereas this one uh, goes to the main unit, and from there it can be programmed to do all sorts of things. So instead of uh, the light switch directly driving a light, um, you might have it toggle through scenes, like in this demo case, where it goes through different light strips, it turns on this light, indicating maybe it's a reading light, uh, or, or fully off, things like that. So you can have different scenes wired right into the switch itself. Um, there's some other things that I'm going to show off here. Uh, concept of blind control, temperature control, all that sort of stuff. One thing that I find that's really uh, interesting about this unit is um, it's kind of universal, highly configurable. Uh, for example, you might want to use this um, as your main unit for a thermostat, or sorry, rather for, um, 
yeah, I guess it's the right term for thermostat to control your AC and your furnace and all that sort of stuff. Um, <clears throat> you can ditch your thermostat and you can use the relays on this unit to actually drive your furnace directly, which is very similar to a setup I have in, uh, uh, with a much older and not as capable product uh, in some reviews I've shown. Now, the temperature sensor, and this is what I find interesting, and this is something that I've actually wanted to do, is they're just using uh, these little uh, temperature sensors that actually look a lot like transistors. I've used them in other projects. I've used them in my, um, my automated window blinds where they detect temperature and operate uh, depending on how you have that configured. Um, the cool thing about this is you could actually put one of these little tiny, uh, I guess, thermometers inside of multiple light switches throughout your home. So not only are you getting a temperature reading where your thermostat is, which in my case isn't the ideal position uh, to, uh, to gauge temperature in my house. This you can have, say, maybe eight sensors scattered throughout your house, maybe one in each room, and you can take an aggregate of them and you can choose to, uh, you know, dictate your climate control that way. In fact, I'm sure some of you people know that you can get motorized ducts as well, or, or dampers, rather. Um, so you might use the different uh, thermometers in each room and motorized duct dampeners to open and close vents and heat or cool according to the conditions in that, in that particular room. So I found that to be pretty cool. Uh, this right here is interesting to me. It looks like a flying saucer. This is a presence detector. It's different than a motion sensor in the sense that motion sensors really need to see a good amount of movement to activate. I have motion sensors in my house. I've demonstrated that in other videos that turn my lights on and off. There's a lot of lag and there's a lot of missed triggers. Um, this is something that you'd actually mount up on your ceiling and it's much better at detecting uh, minute uh, movement. So, you know, I have a motion sensor in my living room turning lights on when it sees me there. Uh, the problem with this is if I'm watching a movie or just laying on the couch, it doesn't really pick me up. So that's, you know, a bit of a shame. Uh, with a presence sensor on the ceiling, presumably it'd work a lot better. Here's one product they shipped me <clears throat> that I never really had a chance to hook up. And I'm sad about that because, you know, I have my doorbell project. And this unit supports uh, doorbell integration. This isn't just an IP camera. It's an IP camera with uh, SIP communication protocol, and SIP is uh, used for voice over IP and stuff like that. This is a microphone and a speaker, and it's actually capable of two-way conversations. So I could take my doorbell project to the next level with a camera like this, where if someone rings my door, it opens up a session to my phone, and I can actually see the person live, and I can uh, you know, talk to them. And it looks like cameras with SIP functionality built in aren't really any more expensive than a regular IP camera. So going forward, I'm going to be looking for uh, SIP uh, built into the IP cameras that I buy. Um, this is an example of one wire technology. This is something that would just go on your keychain, and uh, when you get home, you know, you'd have this docking port. Uh, presumably mounted in your wall, and it's magnetic, you connect it, and it switches scenes uh, with your home automation setup. So, for example, I have my key keys here, and the handy thing is, or the convenient thing is, it, it actually gives you a place to put your keys, too. So when you come home, you can connect this, you could have it uh, disarm your alarm, maybe change your thermostat settings, turn on your lights. When you leave and you pull this off, um, you could have it Oops, sorry, it's a little bright. Um, when you leave, you could have it uh, turn off your lights, close your window blinds, arm your alarm, turn off your fireplace, maybe even hook up an IR blaster, program it to turn off your TV and stuff like that. All right, so before I get into the software, uh, or maybe I already have, depending on how I edit this video, one thing I wanted to talk about was the extensibility of this platform. Um, I like that it was really customizable. I like that it's got a, a variety of inputs and outputs, and I can kind of choose what I want to use them for, um, which is the nice thing. And I do like that they have these add-on modules so you can extend to um, 
other technologies. Um, I'd hate to buy something and to be locked into um, their particular uh, protocol um, or things like that, where I'm forced to buy their, you know, their light switches and their this and their that. Um, like I said, with this wired unit. Um, it supports up to eight light switches because it has eight relays and then they have add-on products uh, kind of like these modules where you can extend it up to a larger number. Um, one of my questions I asked them was how can I tie it into my existing home automation system? Maybe I'm cheap and I use old technology like X10 like I do or maybe I have some high-end, higher-end uh, Z-Wave uh, or other products like that. How would I communicate with it? And I um, actually spoke to someone at Luxon. We did a, a remote desktop sharing for about three hours one night, and he showed me all the software, and it was really nice, and I can't wait to get into that for you. Um, but basically it boiled down to um, you have a few options. Um, one, you can use uh, RS-232, I believe it is, which I think is just a serial interface. Um, so if you can connect to your other home automation products over serial, you wire it up directly, and you just basically import some translation code to talk to it. Another way would be over network. So if you take my home automation blinds for a moment or my existing Wi-Fi thermostat, um, using their software is pretty clear to me that I can easily do UDP or TCP uh, communication um, to those products. So, you know, my window blinds have Wi-Fi modules. I configure it in here. I want to control the blinds. No problem, it sends the proper, uh, you know, I use a REST API, it sends the proper requests there. Another option that I, can, that I had considered is if I just do something like take a Raspberry Pi and I have a USB, uh, I guess, dongle or transmitter for X10 in my case, um, I plug this in here, it doesn't take up much power, plug it in, keep it next to this unit. And I uh, also plug this into the network, and I can communicate to the Pi over, say, TCP, or I might even do a direct serial connection as well. So this is kind of like the brains for my X10 stuff. This is the brains for all my other home automation stuff. And using their software, they're able to talk together. And I think that's a pretty reasonable solution. Also, if you're someone like me who has a Linux server running 24-7, that's actually what controls this my X10 stuff today. Um, just do that. It's the same thing, right? A Pi is just a small computer running Linux. I'm already running Linux, uh, so that's not a big deal. 